I'm getting so excited for you to come to Beijing. It's a beautiful day here, and I'm here in my studio, and I just want to give you a couple tips on getting your travel journal ready before you come so that you can be adding tickets and thoughts and stuff that happens while you're here. Now, this is just a really cool book, and I've sent you a whole bunch of stuff. Hopefully, you've received it by now, and everything that you've been given you can use anywhere you want. So there's no like exact rule or something specific on how you're going to actually make this travel journal. Um, mine, I have used some art that I've purchased in the markets and stuff and I'll be taking you there so you'll be able to get that. I've also used some of my World Traveler collection papers and I've just given myself some um, empty lines that I can write on, empty line paper for journaling. Right here I have written journal. I'm going to give you some more up close photos of my journal so that you can see what I've done, even though you don't have to copy it, but this will give you just a starting point. Um, the video, you won't, won't be able to see the details so well, so like I said, I'm going to send you some photos. I've added some clear pages and I'm going to show you just how I did that as well. Again. This is just more artwork. This little folder that I'm showing you has one, two flaps, and a total of one, two, three, four, five, six sections that have these bendable metal fasteners. Now, before I made this journal. This is what it looked like. This is just a regular um, two, I, I, I'm not even sure exactly what it's what it's called, but I found it at Staples or at Office Supply and it's got this just this really rigid chipboard um, construction that makes it ideal for something like a travel journal. Now this is awfully bulky to have in your bag and not even that unique, it's just your standard size. So what I wanted to do was make it just a little bit different of a size. <clears throat> I chose to make it about seven inches, about six and a half inches wide. Now you can make it any size that you wish. Um, you'll notice that all of the binder portions are up here along the top. So depending on how thick or thin you want it, or how, how wide, however you look at it, it can be whatever size you want it to be. So you can measure down, and I'm just going to kind of measure this one that I already have for, to make it easy. I'm going to trace it with a pencil and give myself a nice dark line. Now, as I mentioned before, this is really heavy chipboard, so you're going to want to be careful. Um, there's a couple ways that you can do it. You can use a straight edge and an X-Acto knife, or you can just take some scissors to it. This is where it gets just a little bit tricky. So what I recommend you doing is starting, drawing a line where you're going to cut, cut it with some scissors. Then when you get to the next page, draw another line and draw another line and cut each one of the pages individually just until you get to the edge. Then you're going to have to spend some time and carefully cut through the binding. You can't cut it all through at one time, so you can have to kind of cut through each layer one at a time. Now I'm just going to use these tonic um, scissors by Tim Holtz and it cuts through the chipboard no problem and I can cut right along that line. Now once I have that one cut away I can take my pencil and draw another line and again cut the next set of pages. And then you'll just go so on and so forth. Okay? Now if you want to, this could actually be two little books. So if you want to keep this bottom portion separate, it's also a great little memory book or use save for another project or whatever. Once you get all of the, of the dividers cut, 
it's going to look something like this. And then you're going to have your little excess booklet that you can totally turn into something. This is very fun, very cool to use. Now, once you, you're going to want to make sure that all these pages are even. You may even want to take an edge distressor, sharpen them up, and make sure that you don't have kind of rough, jaggedy edges. Because when you're cutting with scissors on this thick of chipboard, sometimes you wind up with just some imperfections. All right. Now, this is your empty slate, your canvas of creation. And I have sent you um, oops, a whole bunch of pages of my new World Traveler, the Winter World Traveler collection, which is perfect for this trip. You will love playing around with it. And um, you can use these papers wherever you choose. They're double-sided, so it's perfect for like making mini books and stuff like that. Um, let me just show you my cover is with a red background and I added this piece of silk painting that I bought in the market. This is ghost extras that you also have received. This destination stamp I will have on hand in here in Beijing when you come so you'll be able to use it if you choose. And the China word is from the gold letters that you have also received. So don't worry about working on the cover unless you want to. Like I said, this is your project. You can do whatever you want. Uh, and I'll give you some more detailed instructions, but let me just tell you what my sections are and what you'll need flaps for. This first one is for journal. Great for adding journaling, writing down your thoughts. The days will all mush into one and it will feel like an overwhelm. So you're going to want to take notes, write bullet pointed lists, whatever, as you go. So make sure that you have this section with plenty of pages for journal writing. This next one, I have favorite photos. Now, if you're anything like me, you're gonna take like 7,000 photos on this trip. It's like a photographic dream come true. It's so cool, so fun, so many unique things. So this book will just be a place to highlight your ultimate most favorite. So this flap just needs to also have a few pages in here for you to put your most favorite photos. Now, if you wanna grab into your cardstock collection, Grab just a basic cream or brown paper that you can add photos to, staple them on. That's all. You're fine. Okay, now this flap is for your itinerary and schedule. And like I said, the days of the trip will kind of mush together. So you're going to want to outline what we did every single day. This is going to help you in your scrapbooking and when you get back and you really get to scrapbooking the trip and documenting the trip. Just knowing exactly what we did each day is going to help you with your um, keeping the chronological order of the trip. Now again, I sewed in this cool acetate um, page. I glued the word journey to it and this is uh, one of my overlays and so you'll receive that as well. Now on this page, I made a flap from the side and simply stapled it on. This section is entitled, I entitled it, Cultural Experience. Can you see that? And there's a lot of things that will just be cultural for you. For example, here's a picture of my friend Emily, and this is just her on a bike in the market. This is just such a culturally typical scene. So again, I just added a couple pages here inside the flap for me to add photos that I felt were cultural. Okay, this last flap is, I have used my remember stamp with some stays on ink. This is another overlay that you you will be receiving in your kit. This is just destinations that you wanna remember. Each day we kind of have like a big destination. And so um, you can give just a little bit of insight, your favorite part, write down just the little tidbits that you want to remember. Sometimes this is even just funny memories, stuff that will jog your mind later. This last section I did not title. It can be anything you want, but go ahead and add some pages in and um, leave it open. This may be something that you will want to add as you go. So hopefully that will get you started. And I hope your bags are packed. We'll see you soon.